Bible Lesson 43, Second Day, Friday, April 10th. The story is The Empty Tomb. Today we get to use the resurrection eggs again. It is so fun. Who remembers what is in egg number one? What do you think? Ah, did you remember that it is a donkey? Because Jesus rode a donkey into town on Palm Sunday, right? And the people waved the palm branches and they said, Hosanna. Very cool. So that's what happened in the first one. Because the people really loved Jesus then. Then, we're ready for the second one. What happened next? Ooh. We have in here a... Are you, do you know what it is? It's a penny. And so that reminds us of the money that on the Monday, he overturned the tables of the money changers at the temple. And then also, Judas got 30 pieces of silver when he um, was betraying Jesus. So he got 30 pieces of silver. So that's why we have a coin in there. And now we are ready for number three. Do you guys remember what's in number three? This is the one that happened on Maundy Thursday. You remember? It is a communion cup. So we have a little cup in here. That reminds us that Jesus gives his body and blood to us when we do Holy Communion, our Lord's Supper, and that was started on Maundy Thursday. And so that's why we have that little cup in there. In each one, there's also a Bible verse, so you can know where in the Bible to find it. We are ready for egg number four. So egg number four has... Do you remember? Yes. It's the praying hands. Because after he instituted the Lord's Supper, then he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and prayed. And he prayed and he prayed and he prayed. He prayed how many times? You're right, three times. So he prayed three times. And then after that, oh, do you remember why he prayed? What did he pray for? Yes. He prayed that if there was a different way to do it, to take the sins away, to save the people, that they would, we could do it a different way. But if there was no other way, then he would do it God's way. And so now we're ready for number four, because what happened after he um, prayed? Remember who came? Yes, it was Judas, wasn't it? And so Judas came, and he betrayed Jesus, and then... He went to Annas and Caiaphas, right, the high priest, and they said he must die because he claimed he was the son of God. And so they took him to Pilate because the um, religious leaders couldn't put him to death. So then he went to Pilate, and Pilate used, had his soldiers use a whip on Jesus, and it hurt. It was so bad very 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 bad and so sometimes they would put metal or bone on the end and it would tear the skin even more it was so bad so that's what they did to him and the next one has something else that they did to him in there too do you remember what else they did to him oh you're right he, they put a crown of thorns on his head and so here is the thorny part and that shows that they wound that um, those thorns into a crown and they pushed it really hard on his head so that it would be bleeding. It was so painful. They did so many awful things to Jesus and he did that all for you and for me. So that was number six. Do you remember what was in number seven? If you thought there was a nail in number seven, you are right. Number seven has the nail. They used nails to nail his um, hands onto the cross. They probably did it right around down his wrist so that it, his skin would tear. And they probably wrapped some um, rope around there too to make sure it stayed on there. And so Jesus died on that cross to take away your sins. Now we are ready for number eight. Number eight is next. 
Do you remember that after he got up there, then the soldiers divided his clothes? And the clothes went among all the soldiers, but then there was one nicer piece, and so they wanted to just save that one nicer piece and not divide it up, so then they gambled for that, and they might have used a die, so that they could roll it and see which who had the higher number, or maybe they did something else. But this reminds us that the, that's what the soldiers did. And now we're ready for number nine, because he died by now, right? And it was really dark at noon, and then at three o'clock in the afternoon was the earthquake, remember? We were shaking, everybody shaking. And the curtain in the temple split in two, ripped in two, and then the graves of the people who believed in Jesus opened up and they were alive again. It was so amazing. But um, the workers in the temple did not want any bodies up on the cross on the Sabbath day, which was Saturday for them. And so this was Friday. And so they didn't want that to happen. So they asked permission to break their legs. And so they were allowed to do that. So the soldiers broke the legs of both of the criminals, but then they noticed Jesus was already dead. So one of them poked Jesus' side with a, and we're gonna pretend this toothpick that has gray on the end is a spear. So they poked him with a spear, and then the blood and the water ran out, and it showed that he was truly dead. Now, we need to figure out what happened next. What would be in number 10? Hmm, so he's dead. Hmm, do you remember what we talked about yesterday? That Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus came to get his body? and they used a piece of, many pieces of cloth, and they wrapped him in that and the spices, and that was what they did to bury someone back then. So they took the spices and put it on Jesus and put the cloth on. So that was the next thing. Hmm, after that, what would be next? This one makes a little nice. What do you think is in there? I don't know. You know, I think. I know because I've done this many times, but it is a rock. So this is like the stone, that, the big stone, the big rock that was put in front of the grave. So they closed the grave with the rock and the temple workers wanted that to be guarded by soldiers. So it was guarded by soldiers. And then what happened? What is in the next one? What do you think? Anybody have any good ideas? Let me show you. What's in there? Nothing. It's empty, just like the tomb was empty. Because Jesus rose from the dead and the angel came down and there was another earthquake, right? And he pushed the stone away and the soldiers all fainted and then they went away and Jesus rose from the dead. So exciting. He even appeared to a few people that morning so that women saw him first and Mary and then the disciples would see him later. So that is such a cool story. And we got that all done. Now we need to apply it to your life. So. What does it mean that Jesus rose from the dead? That means that you get to rise from the dead too. And where will you go someday? Heaven, yes. You get to go to heaven too and you'll get to be with Jesus there. It is so cool because you get to be in heaven with Jesus. It will be so awesome. So because he rose from the dead, that's how we know that all our loved ones who die and believe in Jesus get to go to heaven. Heaven is such an awesome place. It will be so cool to see Jesus there and give him a big hug. Wouldn't that be amazing? So you want to thank and praise him and spread the news so that everybody knows that Jesus rose from the dead. We will get to go to heaven to be with him. 
And the more people you tell about Jesus, the more people get to go to heaven to be with him. So cool. Let's end with a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for rising from the dead because now we know that we too get to go to heaven to be with you. Amen. Now, time for the activity. If you didn't do it the last time, yesterday, then you get to do it this time. And um, you can review the Bible story with that lesson sheet that you have. And then you can work on this. There are directions attached. So there are the directions. And they're on this side. And you have the paper like this. You take the top corner and fold it down. So right here. And then you want to fold it so it's flat. But you have to make sure it's pointy in the corner. Okay? So when you're done folding, you might need a little help from mom and dad for this, but this is what it should look like. And then you want to take the top corner and fold it over so that it comes down here by this corner. So you fold it and it looks like this and then you make it flat just like this. The next part then you fold it in half again and it should look like this and then when you're done with that, then you get to fold each side down. And that's where you get the paper airplane part. So it'll look like a paper airplane. So you fold down each side, down to the bottom. And when you hold it like this, then it looks like a paper airplane. See? Let's see how well mine flies. Mine didn't fly very well the last time. Woo! Still doesn't fly very well. I hope yours flies better than mine. Let me get that quick. Here is mine again, and now you need to take your scissors, and you want to cut where it's folded. So I'm going to cut that off right where it's folded there. So you're cutting the edge of the wing off. That's what you're cutting. There we go. So I have one side done, and now I need to cut on the other side. Don't cut down the middle. That won't work very well. It won't turn out then. There we go. Then when you have those pieces cut off, those can go in the garbage. You want to unfold this. Keep unfolding. And then you get a cross. So awesome. It says, take the message far and wide. Jesus saved us when he died. So that is your project for today. And have a blessed Easter and a wonderful um, time. Hopefully you'll be able to spend it with some family. That's the end of our lesson.